to respect guidelines established by health authorities and current LCU COVID protocols, please keep your face covering or mask on at all times while in this facility, the RIP Griffin Center as we know it, the RIP. As this commencement ceremony draws to a conclusion, you're gradually escorted from the floor of the RIP and led outside the facility. To facilitate preparation for the next event in the RIP, we ask you to exit the building in an orderly fashion and your graduate will be outside waiting to greet you. Seems a little cavernous in here this evening, but this is the first of three ceremonies that we'll be participating in over this evening and tomorrow. Tomorrow our undergraduates will be graduating, but this evening we're excited to honor our graduate students. Let's begin the celebration. Good evening, I am Dr. Foy Mills, Jr. Lubbock Christian University's Provost and Chief Academic Officer. Welcome to the postponed December 2020 and the May 2021 Master's Commencement Ceremony at LCU. This evening, the diligence and hard work of each student represented in this ceremony culminates in a tremendous academic achievement, a master's degree. While today is certainly a milestone in the lives of these graduating students, this event and the receiving of their diplomas represents the beginning, the commencement of a new adventure. On behalf of all of us at Lubbock Christian University, thank you for joining us as we celebrate this very significant achievement in the lives of our graduating students. To our students, you're an amazing group. You have persevered. Your overwhelming desire to see this through to the end has propelled you to successfully navigate the global pandemic we have all experienced. As you walk across the stage this evening, it is a visible, and I will say a visceral, display of the hope that is within you. At its essence, you portray the very heart of LCU's mission, to be Christ-centered, to be a learner, your hearts, minds, and hands transform for lives of purpose and service. I anticipate the great things you will do in the days ahead. Now to our audience, there are some things you need to know about the graduates that sit before you. What I'm about to share with you is not an exhaustive list, but representative of the great things about graduate education at Lubbock Christian University. In public, independent school districts in Region 17, a 20-county area surrounding Lubbock, composed of 57 public school districts, one-third of academic leaders, for example, superintendents and principals, graduated from the LCU Graduate Education Program. From LCU's Graduate Nursing Program, 100% of students graduating this evening from our Master of Science in Nursing Education Leadership Program are employed in nursing. These graduating nurses who choose to work at University Medical Center or Covenant Hospital in Lubbock will find that 43% and 55% of their nursing leadership administrators are LCU graduates, respectively. These students have been taught by an exceptional faculty Three faculty in graduate psychology and counseling, Dr. Shauna Frisbee, Dr. Carlos Perez, and Dr. Beth Robinson, had books published this past year by W.W. W. Norton and Company, Rutledge, and Bethany House Publishers, respectively. Dr. Mark Sneed in the Alfred and Patricia Smith College of Biblical Studies has been invited to write a commentary for the Oxford Commentary Series, an outstanding feat for a biblical scholar. These are just a few examples of the accomplishments of our graduate students and the faculty who serve them. We are a Christ-centered university where the integration of faith and learning is honored. And having just mentioned his name, our invocation will now be led by Dr. Mark Sneed, Professor of Bible. I'm going to recite the prayer of St. Francis. Though there is no hard evidence that Francis of Assisi penned this prayer, all Christian clerics agree that it's a significant prayer and it's certainly fitting for this occasion. 
Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I'm pleased to introduce our speaker tonight, Dr. Susan Blassingame. Dr. Blassingame holds the PhD in English from Texas Christian University and currently serves as Dean of the J.E. and Eileen Hancock College of Liberal Arts, the role she has held since 2009. Dr. Blassingame taught English at Robert Lee ISD, Robert Lee, Texas, before pursuing her doctorate. In fact, she can regale you with stories about sponsoring various student organizations, particularly the high school cheerleading squad. Uh, great training for a university dean, in my estimation. Dr. Blessingame has left an indelible mark on LCU. She has led significant campus-wide initiatives, including her investment in the growth of LCU's undergraduate research program, the development of the faculty seminar program, and what I consider her most noteworthy accomplishment, the Thinking Critically series where she challenged the LCU community to think and work together on important issues facing our campus and the community. Two more things to know about Dr. B, as she is officially known by her students and colleagues. She has a wicked sense of humor, and as a grammarian, she loves the Oxford comma. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Susan Blassingame to the podium. Thank you. So here we are at the end and the beginning. You are ending one phase of your life and beginning a new one. That's true for all of you graduates. But it is also true for all of us in this hall after a strange and awful year. I would like to reflect on that truth for a moment. I doubt many of you have read A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Probably I'm the only one. Uh, and if you haven't, I highly recommend it, far above any of Dickens's other novels. I also recommend the 1935 film starring Ronald Coleman. It is a great adaptation of the novel. The novel opens with one of the most famous opening paragraphs in all of literature. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going directly to heaven. We were all going direct the other way. In short, the period was so far like the present period that some of its noisiest authorities insisted on it being received for good or for evil in the superlative degree of comparison only. Dickens says it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. But he also reminds us later in the opening that people have a tendency to forget that no matter the times, we always seem to think that the current time is much, much worse than the previous time. For instance, for some reason, people seem to romanticize the 1950s, that it was a simpler period of innocence than the present day. In reality, the 50s had its own troubles, not much worse or better than any other time. 
I think most of us would say this past year has been the worst of times. I remember thinking last spring break how lucky we were to have an extra week of spring break and that life would return to normal in about a month. It's hard to imagine that I was that naive. How I wish I had known then what I know now. Over the past year, we saw lots of terrible things. On the evening news, we watched in horror people struggling to breathe in ICUs. People dying horrible deaths all alone, separated from their loved ones. But we also saw heroic healthcare workers, nurses, doctors, and therapists battling to save as many lives as possible. Here in Lubbock, we lost a wonderful ER doctor and several nurses to COVID. They cared so much for their patients that they lost their own lives. We heard a lot about the frontline workers, maintenance staff in hospitals, grocery store workers, store clerks, and Amazon stalkers, the police and firefighters, all staying on the job so the rest of us could function. Many of those people too contracted COVID and died. Yes, it was the worst of times. But we also heard stories of workers cheerfully going about their work in protective gear, wiping down grocery carts and cleaning subway trains. One of my students last spring was a grocery store worker. He was called to put in extra hours, many extra hours, which he did because he was helping to support his family, his extended family, although he was terrified that he might cause someone in his family to get COVID. He worked through that fear because he had to. And by the way, he attended my class on Zoom, sitting in the back seat of his car at the grocery store because he didn't have Wi-Fi access at home. Yes, it was the worst of times. We learned sadly that racism isn't dead. In fact, it is alive and thriving. We saw many, too many acts of violence against black Americans and Asian Americans and Jewish Americans. In 2021, we have cell phones that can record these awful acts so that we have proof that they happened. But what those cameras also record is that far too many people stand and watch. They don't act. They don't intervene. How is it that a man can knock down an old Asian grandmother carrying her groceries home, kick her violently, spit on her, and no one comes to her aid? No. Racism isn't dead. We saw a deadly assault on our capital. As my mother would say, I never thought I would see the day. But after that attack, when people were allowed back in the building, Representative Andy Kim from New Jersey, whose family came to America, immigrants from Korea, grabbed a trash bag and started picking up the trash and broken furniture helping to erase the damage that had been done that day. And we also saw videos of neighbors gathering together to do acts of kindness for those different from those different from them in their neighborhoods. We saw police and children of different races and colors befriending each other. We saw peaceful demonstrations of people of all ages, races, economic levels walking together to show each other and the world the kind of America we know is possible. Over the past year, we have seen thousands of acts of quiet heroism and many, many kindnesses. When the Broadway theater shut down in New York City, the stars knew that the workers in the theaters, the seamstresses and makeup artists and stagehands would suffer the most. So they gave performances on Zoom to raise money for those in, in the business who were struggling. Many other groups did the same. There were intimate performances on the stage of the Grand Old Opry that were televised to entertain us, but also to raise money for all the people who work in that industry who aren't rich and famous. Maybe, maybe you saw the film of an ordinary cellist, no one famous, who played on his fire escape in New York City every evening to brighten the lives of those in his neighborhood. And Yo-Yo Ma, the world famous cellist, took his cello and went down in the subway stations when they opened so that he could entertain the frontline workers taking the subway to get to their necessary work. People realized that the arts could bring beauty and comfort to a world living in fear and doubt. 
Yes, it was the worst of times, but so many good things came out of 2020. Families stuck at home started cooking together and eating around the table and playing games. One interesting statistic is that the sale of board games and puzzles skyrocketed. I saw families walking together and playing basketball and tennis and flying kites in the park near my house. I heard many stories of how, about many people who realized how lost and disconnected they had become. COVID helped teach a lot of us about what was really important. Family, friends, conversation, kindness. I and many others decided it was time to make a change in our lives. I don't know about you, but I spent more time in prayer and reading my Bible in the last year than in recent years. I devoted real time to reflection about my relationship with God. I loved hearing stories of how families gathered together at home to worship on Sundays, resembling the churches of ancient times. Yes, much good came out of last year. Dickens also commented on the spring of hope and the winter of despair. I had those emotions, and I'm sure many of you did also. When the death toll rose above 500,000, I was in shock. I couldn't believe that all of this was really happening, especially here in America. This past fall and winter were full of despair. But now, in the spring, we feel a sense of hope that life will return to some sort of normal even though it will probably not be the normal we remember. My hope is that we won't return to the normal that many of us knew before the pandemic. I hope we will hold tight to the realizations that we made when we were in that season of despair. That we will make time to eat together and play games around the table. That we will reach out to our families and friends and make time for each other that we will continue to pray as fervently today as we did just a few months ago. Here's one lesson I hope we remember. We need to wash our hands often. And if we are sick, maybe we will wear our masks so that those, we don't infect the people around us. That simple kindness is one I hope that we will cling to. But what about you graduates? What are the lessons for you in this pandemic? I'll offer this advice. When you start applying for other jobs, here is what I would put in your cover letter or say in an interview. Feel free to email me and I'll send you these words to use. So now I'm pretending that I'm you writing that cover letter or in that interview, okay? Besides the normal skills you might see listed in my resume, I would like to add that I earned my master's degree during the pandemic. Yes, I homeschooled my kids. I attended meetings on Zoom for hours on end. I became a hunter-gatherer to feed my family. I got up early every morning, sort of like Katniss Everdeen in the Hunger Games, to search for flour, for toilet paper, for that elusive spray can of Lysol. I lived with my family in tight quarters for a year, and I did not murder anyone. I nursed the sick and taught algebra and counseled people over the phone or on the computer with spotty Wi-Fi. I learned to adapt and pivot. I learned that I can handle just about any problem that comes my way. I earned my degree through the worst year of my life and I earned it from Lubbock Christian University. So you can trust that I have the knowledge and skills and perseverance to give you my best. I earned that degree, and I want to put it to use in this new normal. I earned my degree by making the best of the worst times. It was not enough to be smart. I had to be wise. It was not enough to take care of self. I had to consider others. It was not enough to memorize and repeat. I had to develop new ways of being and learning. At LCU, I learned that not all heroes wear caps. Sometimes they wear caps and gowns, tassels and border boards. Congratulations to the class of 2020, 2021. You are extraordinary.
you, Dr. Blassengame. Some good advice, graduates, making the best of the worst times. And thank you for recalling those things. Uh, Susan, I have read A Tale of Two Cities, just so you know, you're not the only one. I, uh, I was reminded of that hunter-gatherer thing as I rose before daylight to go on those toilet paper runs and had great success. Thank you for reminding us of the heroism that was displayed. And thank you for reminding these graduates of the indelible lessons that they have learned during this year. We are grateful for your contribution to this institution. Let's give Dr. Blassingame a round of applause. And now to you graduates, just two simple things. When Peter wrote his letter, his second letter, he celebrated the fact that those recipients had everything they needed for life and godliness through their knowledge of the one who'd saved them. And then he told them, for this very reason, make every effort to add your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. What Peter told them was continue to be a learner, continue to grow, add to your faith, and you won't be uh, looked down upon by any of us if you take a slight break from your learning and say you don't want to read a, another book for a little while. But the reality is that you need to continue to learn, continue to grow. And one of those few places in Scripture that kind of gives a guarantee is right here in this text. If you do these things, you will, uh, you will, it'll keep you from being in, in, ineffective and unproductive. You can be effective and productive if you do these things. Great quote that I shared with our uh, community on last Sunday night that was shared with me by one of our oldest board members. And it's a quote from Eric Hoffer. It says, in times of change, which is what you are living in, in times of change, learners inherit the earth, while the learned find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists. Continue to be learners and blessings on you graduates. Dr. Mills. The university is composed of four colleges and two schools, each one led by an academic dean. Dr. Jeff Carey, Dean of the Alfred and Patricia Smith College of Biblical Studies, will come forward on behalf of the other academic deans to present all graduating students to the president for the granting of their degrees. Dr. Carey. President McDowell, will you please join me? May I present the candidates from the B. Ward Lane College of Professional Studies, the J. E. and Eileen Hancock College of Liberal Arts, the Alfred and Patricia Smith College of Biblical Studies, the LCU School of Education, and the LCU School of Business, who have completed requirements for their, master, for their master's degrees this semester. Will all the graduates, graduate candidates please stand? President McDowell, these candidates have fulfilled the academic requirements for their respective master's degrees and have received the recommendation of the faculty in their majors. Therefore, the deans recommend these candidates be granted the master's degree in their respective areas. Thank you, Dr. Carey. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees and as president of Lubbock Christian University, I hereby confer upon you the master's degree with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Will all the graduates please be seated? And will the graduate faculty who are hooding please come forward? And will the marshals take their places? Terry Creech, chair of the board of trustees of Lubbock Christian University will present the diplomas to the graduates 
A representative from each college will hood the graduates. President McDowell will greet and congratulate the students as they cross in front of the stage. Kent Landon Morenas, Master of Arts, Christian Ministry, Canyon, Texas. Mary Madison Johnson, Master of Science, Clinical Mental Health Counseling, Lubbock, Texas. <laughs> Joanna Elizabeth Perez, Master of Science, Clinical Mental Health Counseling, Leveland, Texas. Allison Diane Van Gordon, Master of Science, Clinical Mental Health Counseling, Hartford City, Indiana. Erica Michelle Noriega, Master of Science, Human Services, San Antonio, Texas. Lindsay D. Fink, Master of Science, School Counseling, Crest, Texas. Dana Michelle O'Brien, Master of Science, School Counseling, Loop, Texas. Natasha Lovey Garcia, Master of Education, Curriculum and Instruction, Vega, Texas. <laughs> Maria Elena Laura, Master of Education, Curriculum and Instruction, Dallas, Texas. Michelle Annette Shelburne, Master of Education, Curriculum and Instruction, Lubbock, Texas. <laughs> Madison Davis Carter, Master of Education, Educational Leadership, Seymour, Texas. Celeste Mar Delgado, Master of Education, Educational Leadership, Mesquite, Texas. <laughs> Tabitha K. Duzan, Master of Education, Educational Leadership, Lubbock, Texas. Jonathan Mark Gomez, Master of Education, Educational Leadership, Bedford, Texas. <laughs> Lorena Lopez, Master of Education, Educational Leadership, Brownwood, Texas. Marie McAlpine, Master of Education, Educational Leadership, Lubbock, Texas. <laughs> Jennifer Davis Pig, Master of Education, Educational Leadership, Clarendon, Texas. Jacob David Franco, Master of Education, Special Education, Lubbock, Texas. Jocelyn Celeste Payne, Master of Education, Special Education, Leander, Texas. Caroline Wiles, Master of Education, Special Education, Lubbock, Texas. <laughs> K. 
Kimberly Nicole Apel, Master of Science in Nursing Education Leadership, Lubbock, Texas. Roma Amor Atienza, Master of Science in Nursing Education Leadership, Lubbock, Texas. Rachel Kimberly Bennings Shearer, Master of Science in Nursing Education Leadership, Lubbock, Texas. Jamie Danielle Boone, Master of Science in Nursing, Education Leadership, Belton, Texas. <laughs> Rebecca Inez Cantu, Master of Science in Nursing, Education Leadership, Lubbock, Texas. Claudia Denise Casanon, Master of Science in Nursing Education Leadership, Lubbock, Texas. <laughs> Vanessa Sidney Harkness, Master of Science in Nursing Education Leadership, Loving, New Mexico. Brittany Ann Hilton, Master of Science in Nursing, Education Leadership, Lubbock, Texas. <laughs> Denisha Sheree Howard, Master of Science in Nursing, Education Leadership, Garland, Texas. Andrea Toshana Manahan, Master of Science in Nursing, Education Leadership, Lubbock, Texas. <laughs> Lori Ann Mercer, Master of Science in Nursing, Education Leadership, Borger, Texas. Erica Vasquez Morales, Master of Science in Nursing, Education Leadership, Lubbock, Texas. Graciela Edelin Nuttall, Master of Science in Nursing, Education Leadership, Floydata, Texas. Brittany Michelle Payne, Master of Science in Nursing, Education Leadership, Bozeman, Montana. Yeah. Michelle Sean Marie Respondek, Master of Science in Nursing, Education Leadership, Lubbock, Texas. Melissa Socorro Rodriguez Rios, Master of Science in Nursing, Education Leadership, Crest, Texas. Shelba Lynn Villegas, Master of Science in Nursing, Education Leadership, Lubbock, Texas. Whitney Aaron McDade Warren, Master of Science in Nursing Education Leadership, Dumas, Texas. Amy Lee Clark, Master of Science in Nursing, Family Nurse Practitioner, Littlefield, Texas. Deborah Wambui Kamau, Master of Science in Nursing, Family Nurse Practitioner, Lubbock, Texas. Wow. 
Destiny M. Osogu, Master of Science in Nursing, Family Nurse Practitioner, Lubbock, Texas. Isabel Romero Ramos, Master of Science in Nursing, Family Nurse Practitioner, Friona, Texas. Marla Michelle Smith, Master of Science in Nursing, Family Nurse Practitioner, Clovis, New Mexico. Sydney Lane Sorley, Master of Science in Nursing, Family Nurse Practitioner, Clovis, New Mexico. Cole Ray Vineyard, Master of Science in Nursing, Family Nurse Practitioner, Shamrock, Texas. Jessica Marie Wall, Master of Science in Nursing, Family Nurse Practitioner, Lubbock, Texas. Courtney Brianne Clark, Master of Accounting, Littlefield, Texas. Brooke Leanne Corbin, Master of Accounting, Lubbock, Texas. Carly Diane McLeroy, Master of Accounting, Denver City, Texas. Alexandra Golden Nettles, Master of Accounting, Lubbock, Texas. Jeremy Lynn Nuttall, Master of Accounting, Rockingham, North Carolina. Carly Rochelle Pyburn, Master of Accounting, Lubbock, Texas. Victoria Joe Talley, Master of Accounting, Lubbock, Texas. Dr. Blaston Game, I've got a uh, Bible to give to you as a, a reminder of this moment. Would you come join me? And it reads, since the first day you began teaching LCU students in fall of 1993, you've been an incredible blessing to your students and to your colleagues. Today is no exception. Thank you for sharing the passion for teaching and love of education that has been so evident through your distinguished career. And thank you for inspiring the master's graduates participating in the May 2021 commencement ceremonies. Congratulations, Ms. Susan. Well, audience, it's time to congratulate our new graduates. Let's give them a hand. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Kim Wheeler, Director of Alumni Relations, is an LCU graduate from the class of 1988. I know she's excited to include this evening's graduates as part of our alumni organization. She will now come to the microphone for the formal induction of these recent graduates. At the conclusion of the induction, Dr. Jesse Long will extend a very special blessing and adds God's favor on you from all of us at LCU. Congratulations, graduates. Today, you joined thousands of graduates and former students 
in the alumni community we call the LCU Alumni Connection. You may be leaving campus, but you will remain a chaparral always. Would all alumni and former students in the audience please stand and remain standing? Each of you is a link to our university, and each of you play an important role in welcoming these new graduates into our alumni family. Will all of today's graduates please stand? My prayer for you is that your experience at LCU has truly been life-changing, and I also pray that you will keep your connection to LCU strong not only for yourself, but for those who will come after you. It is now my great pleasure, on behalf of the larger LCU alumni community, to officially induct you into the LCU Alumni Connection. <laughs> alumni. We describe our deep appreciation and gratitude for Lubbock Christian University in two words, forever blue. May we all be and remain forever blue. Please be seated. We will conclude our undergraduate commencement ceremonies tomorrow with a blessing in song. From the book of Numbers in the Old Testament, the Lord bless you and keep you. Several departments on campus have blessing ceremonies before commencement, before graduation. In the Bible department, we commission and bless our graduates with a College of Biblical Studies blessing that is framed by the priestly blessing in Hebrew and in English. We conclude this master's commencement ceremony with our blessing for you, graduates, framed by the blessing of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Hebrew and in English, with which we will put God's name on you. In the verse after the blessing, God said to Moses, in this way I will put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. To receive the blessing, is to acknowledge that we belong to God. Graduates, please stand. Yevarecha Adonai Vayish Marecha. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Ya'er Adonai Panaiv Eleka Vechunaka. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yesa Adonai Panaiv Elecha, the same Lecha Shalom. And may the Lord lift up his face upon you and give you Shalom and give you peace. And may you have a heart that is open to the Lord and his work in your life. May you have people in your life who influence you for good, who encourage you spiritually. May you maintain a church home where your faith will be nurtured. May you find companionship that will fulfill and encourage the honorable, the honorable desires of your heart. And when you find that companion, or if you already have, may he give you and your spouse hearts always for each other, that the joy of your devotion will remind others of their relationship with him. May the Lord bless you with children 
and for some, more children and grandchildren. And your efforts to mold them in his image. May the Lord keep you from the evil one. And may you believe in and know the grace of God and our Lord Jesus when you mess up. May the eyes of your heart be opened that you may know the hope to which he has called you and the power, the power that is at work within you. May you always have in view God's mission in the world and may you have his heart that you see others as he sees them. May you have confidence in your abilities, using your mind as well as your other talents. And give God credit for your accomplishments. Yes, may the Lord bless you in those things that give him honor. Yesai Adonai Penaiv Elecha, the Yesem Lecha Shalom. May the Lord lift up his face upon you and give you well-being, give you shalom. In the name of Jesus, we praise God and we thank him for the blessing that you have been to us. And we pronounce on you this blessing. Amen. Family and friends, family and friends, please remain seated for the recessional. Platform party will exit momentarily when the music begins, faculty following, and then graduates will be escorted out by the marshals. Audience, please know that your graduates will be taken through the tunnels to outside. Once, the, once they have exited, please exit to the nearest door and you may find your graduate outside as we prepare for other commencements tomorrow. Thank you for being here.